Hello, how are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? Sorry about that. That was a different way of joining and it took me a minute to <laughs> work that out. <laughs> Great to see you, Julia. And thank you so much for rescheduling this meeting because um yeah, Paul was telling me about the technical disaster he had yesterday and how it was kind of annoying. So thank you very much for um being with, with us again. And yeah, I'm just looking at my notes. Okay, so I was thinking maybe we could start with a discussion about how your journey began and how it began for your mother and your father and how that then led to your own sort of spiritual journey. Right. Oh boy, that's a big question. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Um, how it started with my parents, because they were the beginning of everything that culminating now. And it's kind of interesting to look back and see where everything started and how people were just following a desire and an interest that they had. My father learned, was the original hypnotist, and he learned uh, to do hypnosis when he was stationed. He's in the military and in the Navy, and he was stationed, we were all stationed in the Philippines. And while he was there, there was someone there that would taught hypnosis. And he thought that sounded intriguing, and so he took that and learned it and everything, and, and he adapted to it really well. It just, it was something that fit him. So it was very interesting and Then when he got transferred back to stateside, um, it's something that he found he could do to help um, other servicemen as they were being called back and, and uh, like especially as we got into the 60s we were uh, people were in the Vietnam War and they were being you know they come back then they're going back to the Viet to the war and stuff and and it was just very there was a lot of anxiety there so that's where he was coming in to help with that because um, he could because this was a standard regular hypnosis that you know just calm the nerves, help you be relaxed, things like that, and just and move on. And so that's what he was doing, and it was, he was really good at it. And um, my mother's role at that time, and if she would help, would be just to assist him. She'd kind of hold the microphone, and then I guess they, you know, they would just work together. Um, this, the word got around how good he was doing and how much he was helping the other servicemen and everything. So uh, there was a woman, that was, um, I think she was a, would have been a military wife, but she was um, from the base. The doctor, uh, she was having problems, you know, losing weight. She had, a, she was very, very obese. And so she, um, the doctor had kind of used everything he could. And he's like, well, let's try this, you know, and he sent her to my father, you know, referred her to him so that they could get, um, see if he could help her relax. And maybe she could just calm down and not you know, just work through it because she had a nervous eating disorder is what was happening there. And so it was causing her to overeat and it was causing all these problems. So anyway, he started working with her and she ended up being a wonderful, wonderful subject. Just went completely mm -hmm. <laughs> out and just was very, very, just it's like one of your ideal subjects, you know, that can just do so wonderfully. And they worked with her all these months and they, and she got through her anxiety problems. And so then, but she was having a fun, just kind of exploring and seeing what else could be done with this. And um, so she, this person had said, I guess she found some things, you know, cause there was very little in those times about reincarnation or anything. So somewhere this must've come up and she said, I wonder if this is something we can explore. And so they just kind of said, well, what have we got to lose? Let's try it. And, and so that kind of, you know, he just started going like she was younger, younger, younger. And then he's like, well, let's go to before you're a baby. And all of a sudden she pops up into a life in, the, in Chicago in the roaring 20s. And she's a flapper. And uh, so that, that was kind of the beginning of it all. <laughs> um, it, was, it was very surprising when it happened. and. Um, it was new because there was nothing there, you know, out at that time to help somebody to help a hypnotist know what to do in these circumstances. This is not normal in the Western world. I mean, in the Eastern world, it might have been something they were doing. I don't know, but over here, no, it wasn't out there. And so this spontaneously happened. And so now my parents are <clears throat> just working with this, and they did over the course of many weeks uh, and months of exploring different lives. They just kind of kept going back and back and back. And let's, like, let's see what happens here. Let's see where we go. And she went back through five lives and back to when she was created. And so she's with God. And so it was like, they got this whole like 
like story of this soul up to this point. <laughs> so that was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. They hit on information. They found things that my mother has since gotten, uh, like she has in the convoluted universe books, you know, so some really out there concepts that was, they found that some of those things back in the sixties. And, um, and then she went back to life. Like she was a spirit between lives. She was, um, trying to think of some other things. There was just fascinating stories in there, but that's what started the whole thing. And my parents, probably the biggest thing about them is they're very, very curious. They want to know I me mean, if you, you know, they're not, they don't go to fear. They would go to curious. <laughs> so, um, so they just kept wanting, you know, let's find out more about this. And they were exploring a lot of different things and what could be done. So that, that started it. Um, then after, they got, you know, they went through all this and they got back there. Um, uh, my father was in this really bad car accident as he was going to work one day and it stopped everything, it stopped the progress of where they were with that. Um, and he would end up being in the hospital for a year. And so, like I said, that just kind of stopped everything. He was in a, in one of those with the Volkswagen buses that they had back then where they have no front, the engine is in the back. So he was in a head on collision and it, it just crushed his body from, you know, the waist down. So he was a lot of, a lot of recovery, a lot of work. I mean, that had to be done. That was a whole major event that happened to our family, but that stopped that process. And then he was forced to retire from the service. So then it was like, okay, where are we going to retire? And the, decided to move here where I am now to the hills of the, uh, of Ozark mountains. And, um, and then just see if they could survive. That was kind of where they were. And my mother was like, it's like all that stuff went on the back burner. It was just, like I said, everything transformed. It all moved and shifted. And so then when my mother, um, you know, when we were all moving away, you know, graduating high school and everything, because I was like, <clears throat> and my father had his accent, I was like 10, <clears throat> excuse me. And so now we're talking a big gap of time has gone by here. So now graduating from high school and moving on, going to college and things like that. So my mother's going through this empty nest syndrome. It's like, what do I want to do? And so she was looking at all the things that were out there that she you know, could possibly do. And she said, I really enjoyed that time travel <laughs> that was doing with the hypnosis. So that's where, um, then she wanted to work with my father and he was in a whole different place now. And he's like, no, I'm not, not interested in that anymore, but you can do it. My, you know, that's if that's what you want to do. So she carried on. She looked at what methods were out there now for hypnosis at that time. And it had shifted from the methods that he had used, which were the you know, watch the shiny object and things and went to visualizations and things. And so she was learning those and she was having a lot of work done with her. Like she would have friends that she would work with and stuff and they'd practice different methods. So she, through that process, she developed her own technique, you know, what she liked being done, like was done on her, you know, what it feels like and stuff. And so it's like, well, I don't like that one. I like this one. And then when she was working with people, I like the effect of this. I don't like the effect of this. So she was, she was, she had enough background where she could kind of maneuver in here. She, and that's an understanding that she always had is to question the why, you know, it's not just do something just because everybody's done it. And they say, you're supposed to do it this way. She questions and she would work with it. And so that process then is what created the technique that we now call, you know, the quantum healing hypnosis technique. It was that whole, this is refining process that, took her maybe 40 years, you know, of, of doing sessions and sessions and sessions. And she just kept maneuvering it. And it just kept opening up into bigger, bigger things to where we get what we have now. And it's how to contact this part of ourselves that has all of the information, all of the knowledge, everything you could want to know that you need to know for yourself. And there's, if, if appropriate, it'll go to even the bigger, bigger stuff that you could ever need to know, like the convoluted universe books. <laughs> and that's where those come from. Yeah. So as far as mine, you know, I just kind of grew up with it. And um, well, I went off and went to nursing school and, and was had my own life. Um, but then the universe had different plans for me at, <laughs> at a certain point. They're like, okay, now it's time for you to go join your mother and help her with this. And um, uh, that's a whole other story. I went kicking and screaming because that was a whole life I had going. And they're like, you got to be over here. And I didn't understand it at the time. 
of what was happening. I do now, and I'm, I'm glad it happened. But um, at the time, you know, when we have big change coming into our lives. We don't understand it always. <laughs> Sometimes we're just, I was literally plucked from my life and put over here with her. It didn't make sense to me at that time as to what was going on. I totally get it now. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so that's kind of my evolution. I was always evolving in that process because I, mom was, we were always talking. We were always exploring. We were always doing these things. So I was growing along with it. And, and then, uh, like I said, after the universe made its move on me, um, I was teaching the classes with mom. This is when she first started developing it. And so I was out there with her from the beginning and we just kept developing and, and growing the classes. So that's, that's where we are. You know, it's just been a, you know, when things are happening that you do it step by step by step, just like they started with their, there's something they were interested in. This has always been something, well, let's just see what can happen here. What can we do? This is, you know, it's very interesting and we love what we're doing it's a while before you step back and look at what happened this, and see yeah. that it's much bigger than that. <laughs> so, and that's kind of where we are now. I mean, it, it really, it is really obvious now what's been happening and I'm so grateful to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. Anyway, oh, so that was a big oh, answer. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, no, that, that does some things up very nicely. Thank you. Okay. Um, Paul was telling me yesterday that you described God as the source or the core and that aspect of the core really stood out to me because it, um, it to me it represents something that's within us rather than without which is how most yeah. people tend to think of God or love or indeed source even the source kind of implies it could be outside yourself so could you expand a bit on the core concept um, right and I'm really glad that you you brought it in that way because that's exactly it I mean this is a it's a part of ourselves at um, like he was saying how would you describe God or what is God and I said they they this bigger part of ourselves um, describes God as the source mm -hmm. and so it's like the source of us it's the source of our energy it's the source of everything that we are um, and, but that's the beautiful thing here is it is something that's from within. When I had one of my sessions that I had with mom, um, I went into a place and it was like, they kept calling it the core. And that's where you, that's where you got that term from. It was like the, the core. They said, that is your core. That is your core. So it was this, it, it's like, it, yeah, that is your deepest part. It was like everything that we are getting, all the information, all the experiences, everything that we get is downloaded for a better word it's kind of processed and it, and it moves into this core um and so it's the source of our being but then we are always see it's a we're always feeding the source by with our experiences and and the uh, the information that we're getting by our experiences that's well i just we just got really deep really quick um, <laughs> yeah. like, that's really our whole purpose that's why we're here that's why you know, we were, were sent, but it's always to remember. This is, this is the biggest challenge of what, what we're doing here is to remember who we are and that we are a part of the source and that source is a part of us. And like you said, that's the hugest thing is to know that it's within us. And seeing by saying that, seeing that tells you we have all the answers. And we've heard that so many times. The answers are within us. That is why that's true is because this source, this core, we have that connection to that part of us that has all of that information. It's just a matter of connecting, which we always are. It's just a matter of acknowledging that we are connected <laughs> and then asking and allowing and trusting. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did your mother ever have an ET encounter? And because um, Paul was saying this was something we had discussed, um, the idea of ETs and extraterrestrial beings being present on Earth. And so I wanted to know a bit more about that. Um, okay, as far was, as an actual, um, actual physical encounter, because there's, there's people here from all over the galaxy. Yeah. In, in human form. I mean, and that's not to scare anybody. That's just, that's part of the volunteers. I imagine we are. <laughs> so, you know, it's just where we are. We came, you know, people are coming from the souls. We'll call it souls are coming from all over the universe. 
They're coming directly from God or source, or they're coming from other galaxies, other planets to help earth, to help humanity raise its vibration. So if you look at it that way, there's a huge number of people that are from other places that are just wearing human costumes, <laughs> you know, because that's what the earth experience is about is we are just being human on this earth plane to have these experiences. Mm -hmm. And that's no different for these souls. They're coming in to help humanity, but they're also having their human experience. You know, they're learning their things as well. It's, we've done the same thing. We've gone to all these other planets. We've done, everybody does this. So that's where I'm gonna lay that one right there. As far as her having um, some, uh, like a physical encounter with something that could have been perceived as extraterrestrial, she had one event when she was coming home from like a, a metaphysical meeting with her group or something, and it was at night, she's on her country road, and there was this owl, this tall owl, like a white owl <laughs> that was in front of her car. I mean, we don't have that here. Owls are not that big, and they are not, you know, that's not, I think it was like a snow owl. We don't have snow owls here. Um, and so, um, and it was like at the, at the hood of her, that level, the hood of her car where she could see it. And it just kept hopping in front of the car and she was driving really slow and didn't want to hit it or anything. It just kept hopping really slow until she got to the driveway and then it was gone. And so, and then later she's like, well, that was interesting. Well, that's all it was. It was an interesting experience. It was an unusual one. And that's how sometimes those things will be. She wrote about things like that in the book, The Custodians. Sometimes experiences will start that way. And then if the person were to have hypnosis or something, it might uncover that there was more to that. There was, you know, something happened in there. But this is, you know, so it's a possibility. Um, I'm just saying this because probably many people have things that happen and our conscious mind will, um, view it one way because that's then we're not afraid and we'll just be okay with it and stuff. But sometimes memories start leaking through and that's where people have, you know, then they, they need to go get more uh, like a hypnosis or something to get to understand what happened because they don't, there's like something is going on here and I don't know what it is. And it may have been something like that. It's mm -hmm. a simple encounter. Mm -hmm. um, another night she was one night she got in the middle of the night for whatever reason, and um, and she noticed that there were lights, kind of in this other room. Well, we live out in the country, you know. It's not, and, the, and it's not by a road or anything. Where lights from the road can shine in, and so she just—it's just funny how these things work. Um, you know, the conscious mind is really good at going, "Oh yeah, it's just a car, or it's just a this," and it's like, "Okay," and you go back to bed. It's later that you start going, "Wait a minute." there's not a road there. <laughs> it can't be a car. It can't be a street light. It can't be, you know, so things like that. And so that's, that's as much as she had, you know, that she remembered and everything. Now, very likely things were happening that she didn't remember. And that is normal. That's how, that's what the ETs have said. That's how they want it to be. Um, they don't want us to remember. This is an agreement that we made before ever coming in is to work with them, you know, if we are in their program or whatever, and it's to be, and they are just visiting, I call it visitations rather than abductions because it's visitations, they're just visiting, checking on us just to see how we're doing, how we're adapting, whatever, to the environment, and, and that's it, and it's not meant to interfere with our daily life, mm -hmm. and so it's meant to be, it's like if it happens, then it's something that you can easily explain away and you're okay with it and you don't remember. But some people, the memories leak through and that's where they might get nightmares or, or things because they don't understand what it is. But anyway, that was a lot more information than you asked for, but <laughs> just no, I mean, I think something, that, something telling me I needed to say that. So yeah. yeah, no, I think the topic of extraterrestrials is vast. And I know that obviously your mother wrote about this a lot. Um, I wondered if you could elaborate a bit on extraterrestrial role in Earth's evolution process at the moment and Okay, you you're a little bit muffled. The extraterrestrial role in in the um, Earth's kind of evolution at this time and how mm -hmm. they're helping us Right. To sort of stand on that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, the Earth is in a very it has been for quite a while a very um, big state of transformation. I mean this is 
I mean, we, everything moves in frequency and it moves beyond and it goes up, it elevates, it ascends, it, you know, it shifts frequency. Uh, you know, we can look back on humanity and see that it has been, a sh it's been shifting, you know, it's been, you know, people grow, you don't stay stagnant. This is part of the whole experience of anything is to grow through it. We're learning. Well, the earth is no different. The earth is a being, the earth is alive. We can't deny that it's alive, you know, it's just the way it is. And it has its own contract, its own soul thing that it's going through and it's growing and learning. And when it hits, a, you know, it grows in frequency, it moves as well. So it's like, it's doing this and it's on this process, but these humans that are here <laughs> are not all in sync with it. And so, and that's, that's uh, holding back the process, we'll say, uh, or it was. And, and so that's where a call went out. The earth sent a call out and said, I need help. Mm -hmm. I can't, I'm having trouble doing this in the state that we're currently in. So a call went out for help to all the corners of the universes, universe, universes, galaxies, whatever, and just went out and said, earth needs help. All right, can you help? And so that's where all these souls started volunteering. And that's what we call it the waves of volunteers. They're coming in to help to help the earth. And the biggest thing they're doing, it's not, it's, it's to help raise the vibration and the frequencies of the humans. Because as that raises, then the earth can do her thing. You know, we can all do it in sync, basically. Because um, as long as it's out of alignment, you know, there's going to be all of these catastrophes. There's going to be things that represent out misalignment. It's things that can't happen. It's just her trying to shake shake up the humans, but also maybe shake a few of them off, you know, <laughs> so it's like, I, I don't resonate with you. <laughs> you know, we gotta, we gotta eliminate some of this. And that's a real harsh way of saying it, but let's, if we can look at it from a really broad way, and it's like, if this isn't working, then things have to change. So that's where all these souls have come in. And it's just helping to that one, they're bringing in energy, bringing in this pure energy from these other places. And then that raises the frequency. And that's the biggest thing that's being, that's happening there. They know how to hold that frequency, you know how to hold that energy and just, and, and they're, they do it unconsciously. Most of them are not aware at all who they are and what they're doing. And that's a big part of their lives is they're like, why am I here? What am I doing here? I don't feel like I belong here. This is a crazy place, but that's, what that's about they are here they volunteered to be here to do this role for the earth and then you can look and see how things have shifted you know just a lot in the last five years really it's it's escalating and how much things have changed and how people view the earth and the animals and you know they there's a whole lot whole different consciousness i mean it's not overall but it's bigger you know the it's definitely gaining momentum in how, I mean, I mean, ask you a question. I mean, like, do you, maybe you've always been like this, um, but do you all, did you all of a sudden, a lot of people just all of a sudden just start taking a different interest in insects. I mean, it's like they have a different uh, acknowledgement, you know, and animals for sure. A lot of hunters, I mean, this is hunting territory. A lot of hunters I know, they, they're like, you know, I got to where I just couldn't kill the animals anymore. It's that kind of a thing. It's like you just shift, and it's like I've been like, the long time. I can't kill insects. You know, it's just where before it's like, oh, it's a nuisance, and you just automatically do it. It's like now I that's a being. See, that's that kind of influence. It's when the frequency raises, you look at things differently, and you definitely look at the earth differently. It's like we're taking care. We're trying to take care of our earth now. We didn't do that a while back. <laughs> you know, it was just oh, we're just here. And so that's the kind of influence that's had and what they're doing here. But it's, but we're all together. We're all, it's all one. We're all, it's all of us. It's like, I don't want to be like, Oh, it's them and us. It's they, they've told me over and over again, you are us and we are you. So we're all in this together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, another note I had made was um, about the marrying of the human and the divine aspect in people and do you feel this is becoming more apparent? I suppose you really answered that question a few minutes mm -hmm. ago when you talked about how things are shifting and people are becoming more aware of you know the divinity of animals and the earth 
So you kind of have already answered that question, but it's just no right. Yeah, and there's another way of doing that too, because a lot of people say, well, there's supposed to be this shift. When's the shift going to happen? When's this, you know, it's like, I don't see anything. I don't understand. Well, it's, it's a very subtle process. I mean, it's just, it's not something that just bam, one day everything's going to be, you know, it's just all different. It's very subtle so that we can adapt to it. But the best way you can see that it has happened, or it is happening, and it's a huge process that's happened, is you just go backwards. Let's go back five, 10 years. 10 years is, 20 years, it's really obvious. But let's say 10 years. You go back and then now look forward, look back to this time. So if you go backwards, imagine where you were then and what the earth was like, what everything was like then, and then now look back to today, is there a difference? Is there, you know, uh, in how, I mean, in, in, you look at different systems and stuff, are they changing? How, are they different from what they were? And that's when you really see the shift. Um, I was telling Paul yesterday, something I noticed, it was just hit me over the head. I was shopping over the weekend and I was in, this is a major department store. And the top, I mean, in the women's clothing, I mean, they have they were just browsing and stuff. And the tops had things like, we are one, um, be kind, um, all is good. And it was like, that, you wouldn't have seen that a while back. <laughs> and that's what's like, and this is mainstream. Now that's, it's like, okay, so this is where now it's hitting mainstream. If it's in a major department store, it's mainstream. Mm. This is a mainstream understanding people. This is the shift. This is their consciousness is changing. They, we are one. It's all good. Be kind. See, that's, that's a whole different thought process. Mm. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people would tend to just look at, you know, some of the turmoil that is going on in the world and yeah, mm -hmm. maybe headlines mm -hmm. they read and things like that because the media don't have it, you know, but they're mm -hmm. amplifying the negative. Um, right. So I think if you look at people and how their individual lives have changed, you can see mm -hmm. that right. they understand things that they didn't understand before and things have shifted for them a lot. Um, so yeah, right. it, it is maybe happening a bit slowly for some people, but it's happening. It, it is, and it's happening big. I mean, it's going faster and faster all the time. And then, like, but look at all this stuff. Look at all these things that are happening. Well. We're making progress. I mean, this is a shift. When you move things and change things, you're going to, it, it stirs up a bunch of stuff. And those things have to get looked at. You know, it's like a lot of this is just, you have to look at what's been here so you can deal with it. And that's why a lot of this stuff is just flaring up. Um, the other thing is, it's like it gives us choices. See, it's like all of this is here. The old, the, the 3D is here, the 5D is here, the 4D, I mean, it's all these things. And so, there, it's constantly, it's where do you want to be? It's which, which frequency, it's all about frequency. You know, we have the frequency of the 3D earth, which is the fear and the drama and, and all this chaos. And then we have the frequency of, let's say, 5D, which is calm and everybody's kind and conscious and, and, and making very um, uh, positive you know, moves, you know, and, and thinking about all, you know, and it's, it's not about destroying and, and, and taking people down or things like that. It's all about uplifting and supporting and, um, and, and just and many, many other things in the middle, you know, it's like, it's kind of whatever we can imagine. It's really is. It's whatever earth that's, that's the earth will be on is whatever we choose. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's all about choice. Now yeah. at any point, and this is where we are right now, people say, well, when are we going to be there? We're already here. It's already here. It's just a matter of which way you choose to think. And that puts you in that frequency. And that's why these things are here. It's almost like a test. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, to see if you'll, well, are you going to pull into that? Are you going to be grabbed by all that fear and that drama and all the emotions? Because as soon as you go there, you're in that frequency. Hmm. Or are you going to choose to maybe pull back and look at a bigger picture and just, you know, this is, where I want, let's see the purpose of this and, and maybe keep the emotions out a bit and then make different decisions to be in a higher place of mind and look at it in a different way. And then that moves you into that frequency. It's just, it's all about choice. It's all about frequency. And we are the ones that control that. Yeah. It's that simple. Absolutely. So then I wanted to ask you a bit about your mother's um, quantum healing techniques. Um, mm -hmm. 
and how that works to benefit people and maybe some of the effects that you've noticed. Um, okay. Talk us through that. All right. Um, this is such a cool technique. Like I said, my mother developed it over a long period of time and, um, and she just started finding out what it could do as she kept accessing this, this higher part mm. of the person. And this is the part that everybody has. Everyone has this bigger self. You know, I, I'll being just, I call it big me and little me. It's just that higher part of them that has all this information. It has the big picture. It knows exactly why you're here. It's like the little me, the con this part, our conscious mind, our physical body is like the legs on the the experiences that the big me wants to have kind of thing. It's like I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to do it. I usually draw a picture of this, <clears throat> but I'm trying to figure out ways to put it in words. Um, but like we said before, this is a way of getting these answers. And so QHHT or quantum healing hypnosis technique is a way of accessing this part and helping people to access it themselves. You know, by, by doing a session with someone, they are accessing them, this part of themselves to get the answers to their questions that they have at this time. And that is huge. You know, anytime you can do that, then they can see what's going on. And what's really great is when you do this in a session, especially if you can be conscious, one well, my throat, <coughs> excuse me. If you are somewhat aware in the process, then by when you do this, you can see how it's happening. And then that's teaching you how to do it in the conscious state. Mm -hmm. And so, and that is what they have told us. We call them they, it's a bigger part of us. It's all connected at that point. So it's kind of a collective. And that's why they, it's, they'll call themselves we, and, and I refer to them as they. They have told us this is what they want us to do. They want us to be able to, to connect at any time we want because that is where the answers come from. That Remember, this is all, this is that bigger part. This is source. This is our source. And then so connect to it and we can get all of our answers. Well, that's what QHHT does. It allows you to see maybe anything relevant from other lives that would, could pertain to this life. And then, then you're accessing this higher part of yourself. So you get all these beautiful answers and answers with answers comes healing on all different levels. You can get mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical healing mm. by getting answers. And that's what this does. So that's a simple way of saying what it does. It's huge. I mean, when, when you are being taught how to attain your own answers from within yourself and all the information is coming through you, that's huge. <laughs> and that's what it does. Mm -hmm. So I believe you wrote a book called you just check? Soul Speaks. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so could you talk a bit about that? Um, your own yeah. work and your book. And okay. Yes. Sure. Um, yeah, Soul Speak. Um, it's called Soul Speak, the language of your body. And this came from this this premise i mean is that it's an offshoot of mom's work it, or it came from her work she was in sessions and like i said they would do these physical healings but in the process they're saying well, okay like let's say the person came in they had uh knee problems we'll just pull that one out you know and just they were getting ready to have knee surgery maybe and this part i will call it the higher self a lot of people know that term the higher self said well this is the reason they're having that you know they're they're stuck in this in this rut and they've got they need to really move on and move over here and, and change their course in life just to be on a different path and they're not doing that so this is trying to tell them to shift you know and get out of this rut get out of where you're at and see that's where anything with the legs that's what it's referring to it's movement on your path and so it's like you need to do something else and it gets into much more detail than that but but that's how it started with something like that. And so my mother was always coming back from her session. She's like, well, this is what I found out this means. And she'd tell me these different parts, what they were saying. And I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense. And I have a nursing background. I was in intensive care um, nursing for like, oh my gosh, a long time. And then home health. Uh, my whole nursing career was over 20 years. And so I'm fascinated by the body. And when she starts telling me these things about this is what this body uh, issue means and things like that. It's like, you know, that makes sense. And so I started kind of creating a little game out of it. And I was like, okay, well, if this, it's almost like translating it, you know, and I was like, if this means this, then maybe this means this, you know, and so I come up with something else. 
And then somebody would start talking to me and telling me all their aches and pains. And I'm like, wow, is, is maybe this going on in your life? And they look at me. It's like, how did you know? Are you psychic? I was like, no, you're transparent. You know, when you're, that's how literal it is. You know, it's like these parts of the body are telling you certain things. So I started putting that together more and more. And I was getting the strong message. It was like, you need to write this book. I, I didn't want to do it. And I explained that in the book. I resisted. Oh, I guess that's my middle name is resistance or yeah. maybe used to be. <laughs> but um, I don't care for change any more than a lot of people. <laughs> so, a lot of people don't like to, you know, challenge themselves maybe or... Right, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so I was like, I just resisted. I was like, well, finally, they just kept really hitting me. And um, uh, I mean, actually, they would do this business. <laughs> I don't feel it. It's like, this is your book. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, so finally, I put it all together and, and wrote it because and it, it's like, it's a translation manual for people to, for the body. Because we don't come in with a translation manual. We don't know what these things mean. We go to the doctor, they give us a pill, they give us surgery, they give us whatever, but that's not getting to the core matter. There's a message trying to be delivered there from our high self through our body. The body is a beautiful communication system. And so, and that's what's happening there. And so what's, what's really good is when you get the message, you understand it, you know, because the message can be, attempted to be delivered, but you don't acknowledge it. <laughs> so it's, you've got to acknowledge it. You've got to receive it. You've got to, you've got to understand it. And then you've got to act on it. Okay. So there's, you've got to do something. It's not enough just to receive the message. You've got to actually do something. Once you've done all that, then the message can go away. It's no longer. So that's where whatever issue you had, whatever physical issue, message delivered, message received and acted on. Now you can go away. And that's where you get, some of these instantaneous healings, these miraculous healings. Now this happens in a session or it can happen without a session. It can happen just with the understanding of what you're working with. And that's what my book is, is explaining there is how to work through that process. It takes a little longer than in a session. You can get immediate healing immediately in the session, but you still have to do the action steps. And that's where some people forget that part. And that's an easy part to forget. <laughs> it's like, but, but if you will go back to, the same things that caused caused it and caused that message to even be delivered, then you will go back to that same ailment. It will be there because that's just how it works. You've got to take a different course of action for mm -hmm. it to be gone. Are you planning um, any upcoming workshops in yours? Maybe Ireland anytime soon? <laughs> It would be great um, to have you. It would be great to have you. Oh, well, that'd be wonderful. I love Ireland. I absolutely love Ireland, and I would love to come back. So, but I think we already have this year scheduled, and so it might be another year or two before we do get there. But I do want to come there. We do have some courses in Europe. Um, we have. Uh, we'll be doing a level one QHHT course in um, uh, Santori, Santorini. I just love Santorini, Greece, and a level two class in uh, Bosnia and so, uh, Sarajevo. Um, and then also uh, they just recently translated soul speak into Italian. So after that Bosnian class, I'll go to Italy. I don't know the exact city yet, but I'll go there and do um, a class or workshop something. Great. So that'll be on the website as soon as we get the details ironed out awesome. on it. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, and I'm really excited to write this article about um, the interview and um, I'm really excited to write the article on our interview. And, uh, oh, that's wonderful. And I love the awesome. name of your magazine. I absolutely love it. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is mm -hmm. yes. well, So thank you so much, Julia, for speaking with me. I have to wrap things up, unfortunately. Okay. But, um, I wish no I could have spoken for like another hour, but um, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank oh, you. thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for rescheduling and um, have a wonderful day. Thank you too. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>